Hi guys! Vex here, and welcome back to Understanding Factorio, the series where you and I take a journey together into making Factorio less intimidating and more understandable. On today's episode, I'm hoping to get up some... Yeah, <laughs> Giggity. Oh, God. <sighs> should I leave that in, or should I edit that out? Nah, uh, I'm gonna... No, I'm just gonna leave it in. I have to leave it in, actually, because I'm recording with OBS, and uh, OBS is saving a super tiny FLV file. Yeah. Like, no, seriously. I did a test earlier. You guys might find this interesting. Um, I did a test. I, I recorded 19 seconds with Fraps, and that's lossless, uncompressed, raw AVI. And 19 seconds of video with Fraps was 1.8 gigs. And then I recorded 50 minutes with OBS, and 50 minutes of OBS's output file was um, 400 megabytes. So 50 minutes of OBS was like one third, uh, no, one four. Yeah, about one fourth the size of 19 seconds of what Frap spits out. Uh, so basically, as far as my workflow goes, um, why am I taking the coal out of those? I am a, I'm a, I'm a doof, doofy face. As far as my workflow goes, assuming I don't make any cuts and then have to stitch the stupid footage together in Vegas, uh, I'll be super set to go as far as my, my workflow and video production. Yeah, I know that's a bunch of technical stuff, and maybe half of you understood it. That's okay. Um, I'm really excited about it. I don't know if you can tell. It's late, it's late at night when I'm recording this. Usually I'm a bit tired. But even though it's late at night, I'm super excited about it. Anyway, um... So, let's take a look, as far as Factorio goes, on... Oh, 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 oh! Ha! Yoink, I got a fish. Uh, so, we need electric mining drills. Those look cool. I want, elect I want electric drills, and I want inserters. Giggity. Um... I want all that stuff, but that takes electricity. So, okay. So we need steam engines, okay. So... That's, steam engines are literally just raw iron. That's all you need is iron plate. And from there you make, like, everything else. Let's go ahead and start. I, I guess I'll make ten steam engines. Now, I already know something nice. I know one of those Factorio hacks. Life hacks for Factorio. Little tips to make your... Uh, gaming and Factorio a bit easier. I know the ideal ratio of... You know, I think I can probably pick these up. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and pick all of these up. I don't think I need this stone for a while. Uh, but yeah, I know the ideal ratio of boilers to steam engines, and that's how you use the steam engines. I think most people with Factorio can probably figure this out. You run water into the boilers, and then you run the hot water from the boiler into the steam engine, and that's all there is to it. Uh, so the ideal ratio is 14 boilers per 10 engines. So that's what I'm going to make. I'm going to go ahead and collect these. And we'll pick up all our stuff here. I think I've got enough material for a little bit. I guess I'll let these run for a bit. Uh, go ahead and grab this. So basically, I want a self-perpetuating uh, power supply here. And I'm toying with the idea of relocating and relocating to the west and making my base over there. Maybe. I don't know if I should or not. I could at least make the power supply over there, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to. I kind of like this little area I'm in right now. There's plenty of wood here. I can grab this wood to make. Uh, let's go ahead and make my boilers here. I need to start with ten, I guess. And I need another four. 
And go ahead and grab this stuff. One, two, three, four. And now I'm going to need some probably five bits of that, more bits of that. I'm probably going to want some one, two, three, four of that, more of that, and at this point we need even more. And while that's going, I'm going to chop down trees to make room. Because I think I would like my... Having coal right next to a body of water like this is great for building the steam engines. It means that I can just use that coal right there and dedicate it for uh, heating the water. Man, I gotta be honest, I really miss... I, I do really miss the... Uh, Uh, the construction robots that could just quickly take down an entire forest in like a few seconds for me. I, I I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna rush to those again because I've gotten used to having them now and I want them back. All right, so my crafting queue. Am I just? I'm making I'm making good progress. It's something for me to do while I kill this forest here. So I do believe the trees have another use besides the wood, is that they absorb pollution and help to camouflage your base from the enemies by absorbing the pollution. But in my experience, um, you still get attacked no matter what. I've never had a base that just never gets attacked by the enemy. So, yeah... If somebody wants to explain the math behind the trees and what effect they really have on the on the pollution and if your base gets attacked or not. Man, look at that sweet iron deposit. And that copper. We are set for a while. Like, look at this. All right here. Coal, copper, iron, stone. And it's all right here. And I can landfill my way into more iron if I really, really want to. Oh good, all my stuff is done. Alright, so what I would like to do here is, and in fact, we could even have the water come in from... Oh, I almost forgot, I, the offshore pump. I need that. That's where all the water comes from. Okay, so we take our pump, and we put it down here, and then put like... I like being able to see the little water in here. I, I don't. You don't have to do that, but... So I find that the easiest thing to do is to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Now the reason I did this is I'm going to go like this, and then like this. All right. And then grab this here. And I would like the engines to be... I like giving myself a bit of space. So I'm actually going to come out like that. And so it's not all bunched up. And then I'm going to put the engines down here. There we go. And then just do that. Alright. So there's our engine set up. We've got 10 engines. And... 14 boilers that all supports each other just fine. I'm going to go ahead and clear away these here. And that picks up the coal that was in, and I'm going to hold down F just to pick up any coal that was left on the ground. All right. So now I'm going to build some belts like that. So basically, here's the key to working with Factorio. And the big thing about Factorio is that you have to work backwards. So I have these boilers here, and I need to get these boilers hot, which means they need coal. Okay, they need coal. Well, in this formation, uh, these 
inserters will take coal from these boilers down here and feed them up. Uh, they'll actually, like, be fed coal and have their coal taken out. Because it only, it only takes a few coal in each one. You don't need to cram them all full, so it's fine. So these need coal, so I take them from these. And these need coal for... I take them from this belt. So working backwards, I have water, you know, in the boiler. And then they need coal, take it from these. These need coal, take it from the belt. So my next objective is make coal appear on the belt right there. Cool. I can do that. Uh, how are we going to do that, actually? I need some of that. And I'm out of iron. And I Okay, let's go get some iron. See, I'm glad I left these up. Got plenty of copper, though. So... I suspect that three electric mining drills should be plenty. And I think what I may also do is I'm going to leave this set up down here. I'll put in... Here, you can have this... That wood. Off you go. I'll leave them down there just turning away on that in case I need to come get some coal for something. But I believe three electric mining drills should be plenty to last me for quite some time. And I'll just put them all connecting here to each other. And then we'll do this. And do I have any other technology? No. So I would like to get them double stacked. So I think what I might do is do this instead. Actually, no. I'll, I'll demonstrate what I'm doing for you guys. So let's go ahead and build some bunch of small electric poles. You go through so many of these early in the game. And it gives you something to get rid of your wood on. All right. So like this, and this. And we basically want to take these power poles and just link up. I can't reach that over there. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Good night, Irene. I am, after all, an engineer, right? This should this game should be like one of the ones I'm I'm better at, right? Okay. So all the generators are linked into the power grid. That doesn't exist yet. Now we need to supply power to all of these inserters here. So just do this, make sure they all have power. And come down here and power these on the bottom as well. There we go. And then make this last jump and power the... Okay, yep. So all that's hooked up. The issue is that I still don't have any electricity being generated and that's a problem. And the reason for that is none of the boilers have any anything in there. So I'm just going to throw some of this wood in here and get rid of the wood that way. So you can actually see there's wood in here, and it's being burned to heat the water. But the wood is also being taken out and placed into these. And you can see the temperature of the water is rising. And if I click on the, if I left click on the power pole here... I can see my electrical network information and I can see how much power I'm generating. And it should start to rise up as these boilers... Oh, well, we're, we're meeting all our demand here. Um, you can see I'm fully satisfied. And my production, you can see my production here as a percentage of my total production capacity. So I'm only producing like some little tiny one thirtieth or something fraction of my actual production here because we have 10 steam engines and each one can produce up to 510 kilowatts so uh, we can produce 500 uh, 5500 kilowatts 5.5 uh, 5 .5 megawatts I believe is what we can do here and we're only needing like, in the a few hundreds of kilowatts so we have way more power than we uh, we need. And I find from personal experience just this amount of steam engines lasts you a very long time. 
It, it really seems to last you until you get to laser turrets. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You guys need more thingies. And you know what? I'm almost actually done with this formation right here. Alright, so let's review this simple steam engine setup. Uh, we've got one pump, and that's enough. That one pump is enough to feed 14 boilers, and 14 boilers is enough for exactly 10 steam engines. So one pump, 14 boilers, 10 steam engines, and I made this little U shape here, and I just put these inserters all along to, yeah, they'll feed up to five coal into them. So. And these still have the wood that I gave them. And once the wood runs out, they just get replaced with coal. Uh, so this little U-shape is pretty effective. And if I really wanted to, I could come in with even more inserters like this, going like that, and just loop this back around and do another U-shape of 14 of them. And then double this to that. And I may, I may do that in the future. And because I left room here, I've got some room right here where I'm running around, I could expand here. Yeah. Now, this is bugging me. I like seeing all my belts doubled up. So, I think what I might do is come out and do this like that. Now, if you'll notice, um, the, these deposit their coal where that little arrow is going, and it's, it was going on the left side of the belt. So, if I know that it's going to be on the left side of the belt, I can make this formation with a conveyor belt and have it deposit on the right side here so that now I've got the belt at full capacity with coal. Um, it's probably in this in this example is not super important, but I wanted to do it anyway. There'll be easier ways to do that in the in the future with um, splitters, which I don't have. Let's take a look at the tech tree. Oh yeah, that's a thing in this game. Uh, is it automation? No. Logistics? Yeah, there it is. The splitter. Yep. Splitters. Those are going to be pretty useful. So anyway, there is... And you know, there's a chance to actually split this again. If I really, really wanted to, I could come in like this and that and double up that belt. Not that there's any real reason to. Uh, but just as a teaching opportunity to show you what you could do. Uh, so now all the coal. I could have maybe put a chest in here with it, and uh, I don't even really need these. These are really obs. These are really obsolete now because they take 300 kilowatts to mine up their coal, and these only take 90 kilowatts to mine up their coal. And I think they work faster, don't they? Yes, they do. So they work faster and they work more efficiently, so they're better in every way. These burner drills are pretty obsolete at this point. Uh, I've got so much coal here that I'm not super worried about running out, but it's nice to be efficient when you can, especially when it doesn't really take much out of you. So now, uh, this formation is pretty obsolete as well. Let's go ahead and pick up the mining rigs. So now what I need to do is... Uh, I really don't have too much in the way of technology. In fact, for the most part, I seem to have hit the... I guess I'll build some radars. I'll build, go ahead and build five of them so I can quickly explore the map. Uh, the radars will reveal this black area for me without me having to move my character over there. And moving my character over there could be pretty dangerous. Uh, with the, I want to say aliens, you know? But this is an alien planet. and Well, this is their planet. I'm the alien here. Yeah, I'm the alien. So the story of this game is I think you crash land on an alien world and you need to make it habitable for your colony ships coming to it, I think was the was the story. 
So you got to build a spaceship and get a satellite into space so that you can contact your people. And in the process, you're also helping to, you know, get the world safe and establish factories for your your friends and, and all that cool stuff. I kind of wished I could have turned the trees down a bit. Trees are such a nuisance when they're close to your base. I think I just broke my pickaxe. Yeah, let's build five of those, and I'm going to build five of the repair packs too, just to have some in my inventory. Uh... Ah, good. I see my radar is done. Uh, we'll go ahead and walk out here with it a little bit. May as well get more performance out of it. So what I'm doing is if you move to the far farthest edge of the power line that it'll reach, you can see it only reaches so far before the core disappears. Um, if you just hold down left click and then just start running, it'll automatically stretch it to the maximum and place one for you. So... That's pretty cool. So I think that was roughly 20 um, pole lengths I'll come out. Just some arbitrary number, but I'll go ahead and put a, a radar here. And so that immediately reveals some area, and then it'll start scanning for more. And how much are these to build? Not too much. Yeah, so that's a pretty decent ways out there. So that'll start scouting, you know, to the north. And I think what I'll do is try and put one, one, two. I'll take this out to 30 as well. And then put another one down. I think in my old uh, world, the... What I wished I had done is put my radar dishes out farther so I could reveal more terrain. Because, you know, if they get destroyed, I mean, I don't think they cause pollution. And I think, yeah, they don't cause pollution, so I don't think they'll be attacked. They probably will be. But, it, you know, if they get destroyed, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. They're not that expensive to build, actually. Um... So let's go this way now. I'll do the same thing this way. And this will just let me know what to plan for. Uh, the thing is, because I've got so much oil close to my base here, I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to expand. So it may be one of those scenarios where I just expand for the sake of it. Uh, for something to do, you know. That's assuming I don't get overrun by alien scum. I'm going to start calling them aliens again. I know I'm technically the alien on the planet, but you'll just have to deal with that. The music in this game is pretty nice. There's nothing that really, I guess, punches through your concentration. Uh, it does its job. It just sits there in the background. Hmm. I am having a nice cider and wine mixture. It's pretty good. Hmm. I've discovered cider is like one of my favorite drinks now. Oh, that's incon. Oh, look at. Oh, man, look at that. That ain't nice. Alright, let's just. I'm not going to be able to do exactly what I wanted to do here. Oh, maybe I will. Who knows? Let's just go around the water. And can I zoom out far enough to see this? You know, I don't have to do this, but I'm being... I'm being... stubborn. I think it's good to be stubborn sometimes. Stubbornness leads you to doing things right. I mean, I guess that's good to be... When it's good to be stubborn is when it lets you do stuff the right way. Not that I really need to do do this a specific way. Okay, there we go. So I've got four radar dishes positioned far enough away from my base that they'll get more area revealed. And I guess I'll take that last one and actually put it right in the middle of my base. That's lined up 
reasonably well, right? So there's the line there, and that ah, yeah, it's 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 close enough. Whatever. I can go and drive myself batty just trying to mess with it. We'll put this one right here in the middle of the base. That's a good spot. So you guys can see that going around here, it's um, scouting stuff for me. And it'll reveal the terrain there and let me know if there's alien nests there or if uh, there's resources there. So I can make better plans about what I should be doing. Because if it's all just blackness, you know, I mean, who knows what's out there and, like... Could you imagine me building some giant wall with a bunch of turrets only to have this entire northwestern edge be water? You know? Like, it kind of looks like it might be. Like, it's just all water, and I don't even need to build gun turrets up there at all. So, yeah. Uh, the world, I think I set the world to infinite, I believe, so... We can just explore forever. I wonder what the actual limit is. It's probably like some 32,000 blah 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 floating integer, maybe. I don't know. Because obviously there would be a limit, right? Like, technically there must be a limit to computer space. So I'm kind of curious what that is. Well, anyway, we have... Uh, you can kind of tell offhand as a glance uh, how much power you're drawing by how many of your boilers are lit up down here, by the way. So we're like slightly less than half now. Yep. That's more like a quarter, isn't it? It is. What's one, two, three, four, five are running? Five out of fourteen. Oh yeah, five out of fourteen is closer to like one third. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess that's it for this episode. We've gotten electricity established, and we've gotten our radar set up. Oh yeah, apparently each of these radars has a unique name, probably based on, like, um, Kickstarter people, maybe, I think, is, is what it was. So, yep, there's your basic uh, energy setup. You just gotta, the easiest thing to do is just find uh, coal right next to water and put the steam engines there, and you're off to the races. Alright, well, we'll try and get some more production set up next episode. Until then, I hope you'd enjoyed, and I hope you learned how to get a basic steam engine set up in Factorio, and that was my goal. And uh, we'll do some more basics next episode. Till then, as always, take it easy.